Uh, how are things at Pennell's restaurant? Uh, obviously, the restaurant trade has been suffering greatly. You had the lockdown. Are you back in business? Uh, how are you dealing with the 10 p.m. curfew? Uh, tell us. Yeah, so um, Pernal's is is a childhood dream of mine to open a restaurant in my, my own city, which is the centre of the universe as far as I'm concerned. Um, but we opened on the 4th. I said to my staff, we're going to open the day we can. Um, we were shut for 105 days. Um, the, self dis- uh, the social distancing uh, has, has, has obviously hit us quite hard with the amount of covers we do. And almost the nail in the coffin is this curfew because... We can't get those extra tables in from eight, between eight and nine and nine onwards, which generally uh, sort of really puts the meat on the bone when it comes to, you know, the turnover, really. So we're finding it really difficult over the last sort of two weekends of, of this curfew, really. Yeah, I mean, down here in uh, London, uh, uh, the two two of our great restaurateurs down here that you'll be familiar with, uh, Richard Caring and uh, Jeremy King, have both uh, furiously lashed out at the government about this 10pm curfew. Richard Caring has just reopened his restaurant 34 in Mayfair and has has uh, established outside these mocking statues, these cartoon statues of Boris looking like a village idiot. There are about four of them outside. So the message is... Uh, resoundingly clear uh, but uh, these restaurateurs these finest restaurateurs in London are furious about this 10 p.m. curfew it seems sort of unnecessary cruel uh, unnecessarily cruel to your industry most definitely and, and, and the same feeling you know is, is all the way up here on the M40 um, we're, we're not happy um, like I say you know, we've seen numbers drop of bookings. We've seen lots of cancellations as well with people sort of saying, we can't get there for seven o'clock. We can't get there for six. So, and then obviously we're losing sort of the extra bottle of wine, teas and coffees and petty fours at the end. And obviously a digestive or a brandy or even cheese, that, that those numbers have dropped. And, and those are our, our profit uh, margins. And when you go out on the streets at 10 o'clock or 10 past 10, the roads are gridlock. There's people fighting for taxis. There's been a couple of incidents uh, outside my bistro where there's been actual physical violence with really? people trying to really? yeah, fighting for a taxi because everybody wants to get home before the you know before that half ten sort of mark and it's the fear of being caught out after ten o'clock and, and also restaurateurs, you know, it's like having you might as well have Rachel Riley looking at the pass, having a massive countdown clock because it feels <laughs> that's right, like, I know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So we we we're, we're looking and we're going and look and my head chef saying to me you know, uh, chef, we need to get we need to get all the main courses at nine o'clock, nine o'clock. So they've got then, you know, know forty five minutes to finish their desserts to then be able to have a coffee. And the pressure uh, before with social distancing was enough, but now with this curfew, it, it's as if we've been beaten with a stick. It, it, it's becoming ridiculous. I totally agree, and it seems so random. I actually, I was in a, uh, I went out into Soho in London uh, last Friday, so it was only one day after the. 10 p.m. curfew started and you're quite right this sort of like atmosphere of panic begins to descend on the restaurant around about 9 30 uh, people beginning to bolt their food swig their drinks waiters running around like uh, all nervously and then you know literally at four minutes to ten they're going you've got to get out you've got to get out and uh, we all go running spilling into the street and out yeah. on the street it is becoming this sort of massive street party uh, with literally at one i saw well, you know, one uh, a group of four very well-to-do people sitting in a door f- uh, frame, you know, a door st- on a doorstep with this bottle of champagne and four glasses <laughs> of champagne that they were finished. It's a scene of madness and unfair to yeah. you guys, and, and not fun for the customers. Not at all. And, and like you say, I mean, it's it, it's a massive part of the economy, the hospitality industry, and it has exploded in this country over the years. I mean. Food in this country 20 years ago was an absolute, it was laughable. Now we've built this fantastic industry, which obviously contributes to the massive pot at the end of it, has been crushed. It's been built over 20, 30 years, and it's been crushed in two weekends. That's what it feels like. It really, and, uh, it, you know, I think if it was 11 o'clock... Yeah, it'd be better. Well, listen... Uh, we'd we'd, we'd well, have the hour... I, I totally agree, uh, but Glenn. Listen, one thing I do know, uh, Pernell's restaurant uh, is going to survive this horror. Uh, you're a great chef. You're great on telly. And thank you so much for your recipe today. That's Glenn Pernell, chef and restaurateur.